All right, so welcome to the South Florida, or actually, scratch that, welcome to the WordPress Mega Meetup, which consists of multiple meetups. Um, I am David Bissett. I am part of the South Florida WordPress Meetup, which encompasses both Dade and Broward County. Um, so we are one collective um, meetup in our area in Southeast Florida. So we are actually two meetups, one in Broward, one in Miami. But I mean, the last six months has it really mattered how many? We're, we've kind of combined at this point, joined at the hip. We're virtual. So one of the things, uh, we've been doing virtual meetups for a while, but, you know, why do we have to limit ourselves to our two virtual pockets of cities when we have this virtual thing going on? Um, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we've got a couple of requests to uh, back the background audio off or down from our attendees. It's difficult. It's difficult to hear in my monitors you, what you guys are experiencing slightly. So we have the South Florida WordPress meetup. We have the Las Vegas WordPress meetup. We have the Southwest Florida WordPress meetup. And we have the St. Petersburg WordPress meetup. So um, now kind of winging this a little bit here is the organizers of any of those meetups that I just said out loud in the chat. Don is here. Cool. Okay, so Adam is, oh, Adam is, there's no way to make somebody in the chat like a presenter real quick, is there? Um, I'm not sure. Let me Wondering if you can do uh, it. Not from uh, chat, but uh, hang with me for just a minute. I'll do it from the attendee screen. Uh, can you? Oh, maybe you can. First time, long time. I see John. Presenter mode on. Hey, John, are you are you good to come on for a second? Uh, you know, he could say yes, and I'm not seeing him because I can't see the chat. Yes, in the chat. So uh, feel free to presenter mode, John Hawkins. And then pop up that. Uh, You're here, Gene, you right? Presenter mode on. Ask you to accept presenter mode or not. Accept, John, accept. Here he comes. And then it was Guy. Hey, John. Well, hello. Hey, John. I, why don't you introduce yourself to the uh, to the audience? Tell us a little bit about the Vegas Meetup group. Absolutely. Well, hello. My name is John Hawkins. I'm from good old sunny Las Vegas. Um, I have been. Uh, I was the original founder of the WordPress Meetup here in town. Um, almost 10 years ago, I guess. We're about 2,000 or so folks. Uh, if you want to find us, a real easy way is to go to wpvegas.com, and then we've got links to all of our fun stuff there. Um, and I already see a couple of our folks from our meetup are in the chat over here, which is pretty darn cool. Great. Elaine, I have reached out to you. And if John, if there's anything else you want to say now, be a good time because we might have to. I think we have it. We may have a limit here of how many people. Sure. Other than uh, I would love to say thanks for putting this together. This is awesome. A hundred attendees. Um, obviously, that's more than we get at a single meetup. So it's uh, it's more that I, came to my wedding, John. <laughs> Ditto. Um, but I like this. I like this as a way of kind of introducing um, different pockets of. Uh, you know, our folks to new folks and uh, just hearing new voices because a lot of times we have a fair amount of the same presenters over and over and over again. So this is a, a good opportunity to get some other voices involved, which is awesome. Gene or Adam, if you can keep an eye out for any other organizers that are saying hi, I'd like to 
make them hosts. Um, oh, okay. Well, I see, I see three people from the St. Petersburg. We're going to have to pick one. I believe I already requested Elaine. Let's, let's request her again. Elaine, are you, are you here? I feel like I'm in a seance. Elaine, reach out to us, Elaine. Okay, Elaine, we may have technical reasons. I'm going to try Jim here, Jim True. See if Jim Jim is on. Isn't this exciting? Well, hey. Hey, can Jim. Yes, we can see you. Welcome aboard. Which meetup hey. are you from? I'm starting to lose we're count. WordPress, we're WordPress St. Petersburg, uh, but Tell we're actually WordPress Tampa still. Bay. Uh, WordPress Tampa Bay is uh, Tampa, which is represented tonight by Steve Curtis, who's currently online as well. Uh, WordPress St. Petersburg is Jim Novak, uh, Elaine Simmons, myself, and Travis Lopes. Uh, we are the organizers for WordPress St. Petersburg. You can find out more about our meetup at our website, wptampabay.org. We have a Facebook group. We have a Slack chat. And all of our meetup calendars are listed on that website along with all of their meetup links and all of our history of our talks, our slides, our videos, et cetera, are all there. So yeah. that is us. We have a regular uh, monthly meetup on Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month, which is an Ask Us Anything uh, online stream. And we've been doing that since March. So. Great. Okay, that's it. And, um... <laughs> Well, I was waiting for the musical number. Yeah, none of the, none of those. This is just pretty much exactly what we stay, say stayed at the beginning of all of our Ask Us Anything. First Tuesday of the month, we do typically do first and third, and we'll have like a scheduled talk occasionally. But during the COVID, honestly, it's been it's been better to do it the Ask Us Anything's, and yeah. and, and play it by ear. One of the reasons why we did wanted to do the try the mega meetup is because a lot of organizers like can't find speakers or they're so overworked or overstressed they can't like get a regular meetup together every month not saying honestly, it's huge yeah no, it's honestly huge. ours has just been incredibly uh, especially over the last several months our ask us anything's have been really well attended people are just asking all sorts of things like you know how do you do this and this particular theme i've got this problem with this plugin i've got this problem with this particular stuff it's wonderful we've been getting uh we usually stay on i'd say i was going to say hey elaine how long do we stay on usually about an hour hour and a half answering questions and we take in people from uh our youtube and from facebook chat and we bring them into our, we have like a green, it's kind of, I guess, kind of how this thing does. You can make somebody a presenter temporarily and then just kick them out of the room. So it works really good. And they can present and share their screen too. So Our meetups can go on for hours as long as, for as long yeah, as we I don't do that. Away from my family. <laughs> as long as I need yeah. to stay away from my family. Sometimes that's all night. Yeah. No, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. Morning. <laughs> Me in the morning. Well, thank you, Jim. Good to have no you, problem. and thanks for supporting there. Yeah. Um, so why don't you go ahead and mute yourself? And I Love think it. we got one more. Guy, are you on? Hey. There you are. <laughs> hey, Guy, where are you from? And I like your shirt. Yes. Oh. I'm in the Fort I'm not Myers going to throw Florida. beats at you. It's not going to work. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm representing Southwest Florida. I'm here in Fort Myers. Um, our our meetup covers the area from Fort Myers, Estero, Bonita Springs, and Naples. Um, I just kind of took over lead organizer from the infamous Burgett, as she was focus focusing a lot more on, I think, WordPress and her own businesses and stuff. So she's asked that I, I jump in a bit more. And... Um, so we tried to have alternate months before the whole virtual thing. Um, Naples with a meetup and then a Fort Myers downtown meetup and we even have a coffee clutch midday, midweek meetup for uh, just six to eight people to kind of meet up. And it, that one's really more of a help desk problem solving situation. 
but it's nice. Our, our our demographics, I think, is a lot of small business owners trying to bring their business online, um, usually for the first time. So uh, many people are brand new to the web, uh, but plenty of um, experts as well, uh, programmers, developers. Um, so we try to we we try to have a nice balance for everything as far as from beginner to expert. It's it's it, I find it's a little bit difficult to try and keep the experts interested when you're trying to make sure that you're not losing anyone that that's new to WordPress. But I think it's because we because we try to um, make it happen. I think that's one of the great things about the WordPress community is that we try to be as inclusive as and supportive as possible. So when's the last physical WordPress event you've been at? Uh, WordPress or uh, WordCamp Miami 2020. I knew the answer to that. I just needed free advertising. Um, <laughs> what's what's been the biggest lesson of how you've adapted to more of the virtual scene over the last couple of months? Because we've all had to kind of learn as we go along here. We thought we knew virtual events, but we what's been what's been the biggest lesson or most is the thing you picked up on probably the best personally. Well. I think it's remembering that there's a camera on you when you're presenting. And so <laughs> so what I what I mean by that is that you are animated. Like it's not like an in-person talk where you're walking around and you're talking, you're using your hands and so you kind of need to be ener uh, energetic and um, not too monotone, which I know that's something I've been working on doing cuz sometimes I can get into that rote sounding, reading my slides, and it's not fun or exciting for anyone. <laughs> so it's trying to be animated, and I really, really want a stand-up desk. So okay, we'll really, get right on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, if you could do that, I mean, that would be the ultimate WordCamp Miami swag right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as soon as the organizers get it, we'll get right, we'll, we'll, we'll get right on yeah. that. Oh, and uh, good lighting is good, too. Oh, yeah, I'm in a cave right now. Yes, that's yeah. Well, it's, when it gets darker and later in the year, I'm gonna have to start a fire over there. Yeah, so, I, well, we're very glad to have you, guy. All right, you can disappear right. into the ether until we need you again. You know, we'll say your name three times. Thanks, <laughs> to good, good to have you. Oh, wow, that's just enough people already. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming to the WordPress meet. What? Oh, we've got more. We've got more. Oh, yes, we've got actually have speakers. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I was a little bit too excited. All right. So first of all, um, before we get into the speakers, I wanted to say thank you, everybody, for coming. We have almost or over 110 people here. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Um, we also want to thank Adam and Sandy from GoDaddy Pro. They're sponsoring this meetup, and we might hear more from them or about that. As the meetup goes forward, we have two speakers. Our first speaker will be Ali Nimmons. Um, before that, though, I wanted to, um, every South Florida WordPress meetup has a really quick presentation of something we call, well, we call it the top nine. But right now, today, today it's going to be called the top five because we have so much to get through in the next hour and a half or, or so. I wanted to see if I can share my screen here. I'm, let's see if I'm able to. You know, you know what, let me, let me pause on that because my, my keynote is going full screen, so I can't see the browser and you all at the same time. Um, Allie, are you with us? Yes, I am. <gasps> There's a voice. Is there a picture with the voice? No! Oh! <laughs> oh no, I just saw my own reflection. There you are. There's a prettier, there's a prettier face. <laughs> well, Allie, how's it going? It's going really well. I'm actually, for the sake of nostalgia, I'm gonna wear this during my talk. This was from I think 2017. It was the first WordCamp I ever went to, and so I'm gonna be lame and wear this. That was the best bag because they were simple and indestructible. Like yeah, this thing is like 
it is it's, amazing. Like it's this like thick plastic. Yeah, this one is really good. Yeah, let's just hope it's recyclable in the end. But that thing would probably survive <laughs> a hurricane. If you, like just the last hurricane scare we we literally had, we just taped those to the windows. And it's, yeah. um, so Allie is actually from South Florida. Um, mm -hmm. she's actually still here. Um, Allie, how did you get involved in WordPress? How did I get involved in WordPress? I worked at an agency once I decided that I wanted to become a web designer. Um, I got a job at an agency and they used WordPress for uh, building sites for their clients. That's actually how I learned about the community is my boss decided he was going to apply to speak at a WordCamp and he did and he brought me with him. Um, so yeah, it was that one agency that I first worked at where I realized that I could I could build websites without having to code if I didn't feel like it, which is pretty amazing. And what was your first year? What was your first ex WordCamp experience? Um, it was yeah, going with my boss to that WordCamp. Physical now, right? Yeah, physical WordCamp experience. It was going with my boss to the WordCamp that he spoke at, which I I think. It must have been whichever one this one, whichever year this was. Um, and I wasn't a speaker or anything. I just ran around and watched people speak. I actually saw Michelle, who's the other speaker this evening. I saw her speak. I, I very, very vividly remember uh, seeing her speak. I saw like Morton Hendrickson speak, all these really, really amazing people. And I just remember thinking like, wow, like I want to do this. I want to the things that these people know and i want to speak at word camps and share that knowledge with other people and yeah it was just really really inspiring for somebody who just was on their like journey building things with wordpress it was very inspiring i can speak from personal experience that i've been an org uh, one of the organizers of word camps ali has been on ali is an amazing organizational creature and if she's human coffee, a good that is a fantastic a good, um, compliment, David. Thank you. Kind. Not the not, <laughs> not the bad coffee at that Taco Hill that one time. But yeah, uh, okay. Well, you were actually um, are speaking today, and um, what are you speaking about? Um, I'm talking about. I have two titles for this talk. One is supercharging your maintenance packages. So main, WordPress maintenance packages that you might be offering to clients. Um, but we're also going to take a focus on maximizing revenue with those maintenance packages. So supercharging your maintenance packages for increased revenue. Excellent. Now, before we, before we let you on, I just want to tell our audience here, because we've had a few more people join us, we are actually going to be giving away prizes and throughout the next hour and a half or however long this lasts i don't know like i said my family's still here so i'm not going anywhere um there are going to be at least three winners for these gifts um adam is not on so i can tell you that the three main gifts this evening are going to be physical gifts swag bags from godaddy we are trying this out and if we can get our operation really set at this meetup in our September meetup, not the September meetup, because that's this meetup, because wait a minute. Okay, now I've set my calendar to the correct month, because I thought this was <laughs> August. October meetup, we will actually may give away uh, um, substantially, in my opinion, bigger or better prizes. So we're kind of testing this out. I didn't want to give a massive gift card or massive Lamborghini out to people, you know, with, without trying it out first. So this is, I propose, if you want to enter to win for stuff this evening. People have claimed they are wearing their WordCamp or WordPress t-shirts. They've claimed that. They're lying SOBs. So this is what we're going to do. If you did get an email, you'll know that there's a website called W, w, excuse me, WP Game Show. I am dropping the link in here. We so far, I don't know how many people we have joined, but I, I warned you when we sent the link for this meetup for this link that you had to join the site to qualify to win a prize. So if you're not in there, register for it right now. And mind if I share my screen real quick? Because I think this will just be really 
easy. So this, this is the WP Game Show website. We are, seriously? Oh, oh oops. I guess not. I'll get back to you on that. So I'll drop a link in while Allie is presenting. But once, I think I know what happened. Once I hit the little reset button on it, I will ask you to log in, register, and on the homepage, you post a picture of yourself wearing the T-shirt. And we'll pick one randomly, and that'll be winner number one. But I don't want to distract Allie any more than she already is because her eyes are already starting to drift that way. So, Allie, why don't you take it away and tell us how we can earn more money in such a prosperous economy right now? I, know. Like, I don't know why. Awesome. I'm like I'm drowning in dollar bills over here, like Scrooge McDuck. But <laughs> you tell me, you tell me how we can solve this problem if if that what I just said was a lie. So let me. You, okay, you got I it. Think your presenter already, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, and you guys let me know in the chat when you can see it, please. Can y'all see my screen? Yep. And okay. I would like to awesome. I would like to add, yes, I'm back on. Yes, your nightmare is still there. Um, if anybody has questions for Allie, the best uh, thing I can suggest is drop a question in chat. Make sure to end it with a question mark. That, that That's going to help. <laughs> and we'll have people monitoring chat, and we'll try to capture those questions and try to present them to Allie at the end. What kind of question? Oh, sorry, Damien, you just used your one question asking that. Better luck next time. Go ahead, Allie. Okay. So, like we mentioned, we're going to be talking about um, supercharging your maintenance packages in order to maximize the amount of revenue that you can earn with those maintenance packages. So, we're going to be talking about the basics, the more advanced ways that you can kind of go above and beyond with those maintenance packages and stand out in a more crowded market. And we're going to touch a little bit on pricing and packaging. Um, these slides are going to be available, or they are currently available on my website, alliedamonds.com, under talk slides. Um, so my recommendation for you is to not worry too much about what's on the slides, but listen, see if anything sparks your fancy, sparks your attention. Um, I'm going to throw a lot of ideas out. I'm going to throw a lot of different concepts and ideas, and I don't want you to get bogged down with how many there are. I'd just like you to listen. and. Um, Maybe make note if any of them seem like a good idea to you. So just a little bit about me. Um, I started using WordPress in 2015, and I was at an agency where we were not offering maintenance packages. And at a certain point, someone turned to me and said, hey, you, intern, develop some maintenance packages for us. And so I did that, and they kind of sucked. Uh, we had three to five clients on one of those packages at any given time. Um, and I learned a lot through trial and error with those packages. In 2018, I started my own business where I provided website design and development services for small businesses and nonprofits. And I included maintenance as a subservice within that business. And I learned even more about how to scale uh, those services, how to operate completely independently all on my own. Um, and at the height of that, I had about 20 to 25 customers at any given time on my maintenance packages. And now in 2020, I work at WP Buffs, which is a WordPress um, maintenance company. That's all that we do. We work with direct customers, white label partners, and we help them maintain their websites. And we serve over 700 different customers, um, each of those customers having anywhere from one to, I think our biggest customer has 30 websites on their account with us. So lots and lots of clients, lots and lots of customers, lots and lots of websites. Um, so I learned a lot between 2018 and now about, again, how to scale those services um, and how to really make that work for you as business. So we are gonna talk about the basics, which are gonna be great for if you're just starting out and you're considering like, hey, I wanna start offering maintenance as a service, how do I do that? Uh, and then we're gonna talk about how to inject more life and more power, more value, more money into those services, how to automate and charge more for that. 
Uh, just a disclaimer, nothing I say here is a direct um, recommendation from WP Buffs. Um, I'm going to reference them a little bit, but these are all my opinions, my thoughts, my journey. All right, so the basics. I say basics plus here because there are a lot of things that everyone offers, right? There's kind of base services that every single WordPress maintenance package is gonna offer, but you don't wanna just offer the bare minimum. You wanna stand out, right? Uh, the addition, uh, there are additional services that can help you make extra money on top of that, um, but also help you to retain those clients in the long term, which prevents a loss of money, right? So there are things I'm gonna talk about that maybe you wouldn't necessarily wanna charge more for, but will help you to prevent losing clients in the long term. Okay, so the most basic thing that you are going to include in your maintenance packages are updates. We can't be friends if you don't have updates as a part of your maintenance packages. It's essential, right? We know that about WordPress. WordPress runs on consistently being updated. Um, and what's the point of those updates if you're not backing up that site and making sure that those updates go well and you have a backup in case they don't. But on top of that, there are other things that we wanna offer, right? Maybe when you update WordPress, you want to communicate with your client about what that update actually includes. Every time we have a major update, we just had one with 5.5. There are tons of people out there who write blog posts and make videos about what's so special and important within that update. Share that information with your clients. Um, a great opportunity to make a little bit of extra money is to set up a child theme. So when you are updating your clients' themes, you know that there is a child theme there as well that you can work with. Um, if you, a lot of times I would get clients to me with existing sites, right? Not sites that I built that didn't have a child theme. And so saying, hey, here's why you should have a child theme while you probably need one. For X amount of money, I can create one for you. Um, offering a plugin audit when you first get a new client uh, offering yearly plugin audits, making sure that they're not running too many plugins or plugins that they don't need, and setting up an MU plugins folder for them, which um, I definitely recommend if you don't know what an MU plugins folder is, Google it, look it up. It's a brilliant idea and it's extremely important if you have security plugins that are running on the site, things that absolutely should not be touched. I can't tell you how many times um, I've worked with a client and they were really upset because one of their features wasn't working and I log into the site and they had deactivated it for some insane reason. So MU plugin folders are very helpful. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're running um, backups off the site, local, ba uh, local backups of the file and database. Uh, I am not embarrassed and embarrassed to say that uh, when I very first started using WordPress, I didn't understand that there had to be a backup of the file and the database. I learned that the hard way. Uh, make, sure, make sure you're backing up their email as well. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, security monitoring and removal. So malware removal, uh, things like emergency support or emergency recovery of a down site, those sorts of things, right? Those are the things that we need to be including. Uh, but make sure that you also have, when you're building out your maintenance packages, make sure that you have some sort of emergency procedure in place and communicated clearly in writing with your client. The reason I say this is because if something does go wrong, what you want is on the other side of that experience for the client to say, I'm never gonna leave you. You handled this so perfectly and amazingly. This could have been awful for me, but you absolutely saved my website. What we don't wanna hear is, I can't believe you crashed my site. It was a nightmare to get back up um, and I'm gonna go find somebody else to maintain my site for me. Having a super clear emergency procedure, whether that be how they get in talk, contact with you, whether that be a contact form that you have clearly laid out with all of your questions, whatever that means to you, lay out an emergency procedure. Um, another opportunity to make some extra revenue is setting up a custom coming soon or maintenance page for them. Uh, just in case you need to take the site down for some reason to do some kind of troubleshooting, um, that's a great opportunity to add a little add-on at the beginning of the process to say, hey, for an extra X amount of money, I'll make a super beautiful branded maintenance page for you. That way, if something does go wrong, which it won't, but if something does go wrong, you'll have this page that has all of your information, contact information, and you won't lose business. 
uh, and make sure that you have an option for a security audit. So if something does go wrong, it's not really enough to just kind of get the site back up or get that malware off of there. You wanna figure out why it happened so that you can prevent it from happening again. So if hardcore security is really not your jam, consider an affiliate relationship, consider a white label partner, consider um, partnering with somebody or a contractor that you can work with um, and be that liaison between the security expert and your client. Just making sure to instill that extra peace of mind, um, but packaging that like a service, right? All right, so optimizations and reporting. So when I say optimizations, I mean speed, I mean performance, all that gorgeous kind of stuff. Um, and I say reporting because reporting is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, with website maintenance, no news is good news, right? If we keep their sites running and nothing is broken and nothing bad happens, we're doing our job. But then they forget that we're there and they don't understand the value that we're providing. So it's extremely important um, to make sure that you have some system of reporting, whether it be weekly, monthly, quarterly. I wouldn't do it further out, more further out than that. I once lost a client entirely because she went to a gorgeous meetup, just like one of these, and she contacted me and she said, I know everything that I need to know about maintaining my WordPress site and I don't need you anymore. Thank you so much for your time. And um, that was when I learned that I needed to start sending out reports, right? Um, so the things that we can do in addition to that, right, the, the add-ons that we can gain more revenue from, any optimizations that you are doing, make sure you are doing them on the server level as well as, you know, any kind of plugins that you might be installing. Like if you go in and install WP Smush to optimize image images, that's fantastic. But we also need to think about the server environment if we can. So making sure that their PHP version is up to date, um, looking at things that I don't particularly understand, but I try to do my best with like TLS, CPU count, disk capacity, um, all of that fun stuff, getting rid of any bloated files that they have when they come on to your package, um, getting rid of any plugins, getting rid of, getting rid of, getting rid of any of those uh, I'm sure you've logged into a client site before and, and looked at their files and saw backups from like previous years in their site files. That doesn't need to be there. So making sure that their server environment is as clean as optimized and maybe even recommending that they move to another host if, if you feel that that's necessary for them. Um, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the WP config file as a source of a one time really awesome service. Uh, Jesse Velez, who is an awesome all-around human being. He's also one of the organizers down here in Miami. He has this amazing blog post that he showed in a meetup last year sometime. Um, we do internet.net slash power up your WP config. Go find it. It's amazing. And he explains all of the amazing optimizations that you can do with the WP config file. That's worth a, building a one-time service around when you get a new site that you're going to be maintaining. And just to circle back to reporting, it might be a good idea depending on the size of the site or the size of the company that you're working with to not only have like written, sent, emailed reports, but to schedule reg regular check-in calls and report to them verbally about the things that it is that you're doing and bake that into the pricing of your more high-level packages. All right. So those are all of the kind of basic things, the things that everybody offers. When I first built this presentation, I Googled WordPress website packages, and I looked at the very first 20 websites that I found on Google that were companies that offer website maintenance. And the things that I'm about to go over here were only offered on about 20% of the websites that I found. So that just kind of goes to show how much opportunity there is out there for you to provide services that not everyone else is providing. And that might be the tipping point for you if somebody is comparing you to another company and then they're like, wow, this person is offering XYZ other service and the prices are pretty decent. So I might go with this person. So these are things that you might not have thought to do. Uh, so I've broken this up into ongoing services and um, one-time services. So some of the ongoing services that you can be charging for 
are reseller hosting. What I did when I had my maintenance business was I essentially had two packages. You could have just maintenance, you could have maintenance and hosting. Uh, there are tons of fantastic opportunities out there for reseller hosting, especially if you are in a situation where you also build websites. When someone comes to you and says, hey, I need a website, and you say, okay, cool, what host are you gonna be using? And they're like, I don't know what that means. You now can say, great, I can host it for you. And that puts so much um, agency and power into your hands as the designer and or developer. Uh, content updates. That's one of the things that we spend most of our time doing at WP Buffs. If somebody just needs an email address changed or a photo swapped out, those are things that you could be providing. Um, that does quickly scale and you can lose control of that very easily. So it's important to really think about what sort of content updates you are able and have the time to be able to handle depending on the size of the sites you work with, the number of sites that you work with, but it is definitely um, a way to grow your services more than just, oh, I'm gonna automate a bunch of stuff and then charge them for it. Make sure that you have a system for checking on broken links, which is incredibly cool and incredibly handy. When I learned that you could automate this, um, especially if you're working with someone, like I worked with a lot of bloggers when I started my business, like, food bloggers, lifestyle bloggers, and people who are very, very, very focused on the SEO of their blog. And so if you can keep an eye on the links that they're sharing and give them a heads up when one of those are broken, amazing value, not a lot of effort on your part, but it is something that you can up the price of your package with. And build in form auditing. So basically all sites have some way of getting in touch with the person who runs that site, right? I would say, I don't know, 90%, I'm guessing there. But for most people, it's really important if you have a lead generation site, if you have an e-commerce site, the forms on your site really, really need to work. And for most people, you cannot risk those forms not working. So building that into your systems and processes as far as the maintenance services that you provide, awesome opportunity. Cool, so some one-time services that you could be charging for. Maybe these are things that you charge for right up front at the beginning. Maybe these are add-ons that you roll out. So every month you reach out and say, hey, this is something I'm doing. Maybe I'm doing a special this month where my clients get X amount off of one of these services. However you wanna package it up, be creative, have fun with it. But these are all things that you can and should be doing because they will make the site better right? They'll make the site, some of these things more secure. They'll make it perform better. They will contribute to the success of the business that that site is for. And if you have a client that goes out of business, that's money lost to you. So it's in our best interest, right? To make sure that that business is successful. So things like installing their SSL certificate for them, if they don't already have that set up, it's a must. Setting up a CDN for them if they need one. Uh, installing any SEO metadata, so titles, descriptions, alt tags, if that's something that you feel comfortable doing. Uh, image optimization, setting up things like Google Analytics or Google Search Console for them, or even giving them a dashboard maker, makeover. So customizing the WordPress dashboard, customizing the WordPress login page for them, um, and really making their website feel branded and personal to them. Those are not hard things to do. They're not super, none of these things I believe are super time intensive. The SEO metadata thing might be, but most of these things are things that you can do fairly quickly, but you can charge for them. And a couple of kind of peace of mind things. Um, these are things that I think most of us as designers, developers, um, maybe experienced WordPress users, not sure how many people here would describe themselves as experienced WordPress users. Um, but most of these things, I think, are things that people don't think about when they very first start a WordPress website. And that's like having a staging site, having a staging site that is being updated along with your regular site, right? Um, so you can have that on as a service is when you join on with me, I will create a staging site for you and there will be an extra fee to keep both of those sites updated and have them working in tandem with each other, right? So testing updates on the staging site, pushing those things live, so on and so forth. Uh, working with that individual to make sure that their website is legally compliant. Um, I would definitely not recommend like 
DIYing this all yourself, definitely find a legal professional to partner with, Termageddon. I'll just say it, they're amazing. You should reach out to them if you haven't already. But things like privacy policies and terms and conditions, it's super easy to throw up a WordPress website these days. Not everybody knows that you need to have these very important privacy documents available. And so for you to be the middleman between your client and a company like Termageddon could be extremely impor important and lucrative for you. Um, Ellie, and something Ellie, I learned about. Ellie, I'm sorry. Yeah. What was the name of that again? The Termageddon. Company? Termageddon. I just put it in the chat. Okay, thanks. Sorry, go ahead. No problem. No problem. Um, thank you. I probably said it too loudly. Um, yeah, so one thing that I learned about recently are blacklist checks. So there is a site called Hetrix. I'll put that in the chat too. I believe they're still around. Um, it's like a website reputation checker. Um, so if they're having SEO issues, you can determine like, has your domain been blacklisted by Google for any reason? Things like that. So that would be quite a cool thing to add when somebody joins on with you. It's like, hey, I'm going to let you know currently the reputation of your domain and your website. Um, and if there's any um, problems there, I can help you out. Uh, someone said, can't see what's been typed. Hetrix, it's spelled H-E-T-R-I-X. Let's go ahead and look that up. All right, so let's talk a little bit about pricing and structure. Pricing, oh, thank you, Daniel, hetrixtools.com. Um, pricing is important, but very, very personal to you, to the level of skill that you have, be honest with yourself, okay? If you're just starting out, you're not gonna be charging the same as somebody who's been doing this for 10 years. Um, the level of experience, right, that you have, how much, time you have to be able to dedicate to each customer or each client if it's just you versus if you have a team that's very different pricing is going to be baked into there right um, also consider where your clients are at if you are attracting clients that cannot afford you you have to think about do i need to attract people who can afford me or do i need to lower my prices and acquire more people. It's very, very tricky. I will never say that I'm an expert on pricing, um, but I have a couple of tips to help you figure out how to build the pricing and the packages that are gonna work for you. Too many options can decrease the likelihood of making any decision at all. When I sit down and really think about this, it blows my mind a little bit because I think it's something that we all know but we don't, we forget, and we don't put it into action as much. So decision paralysis, exactly. My fiance actually calls it analysis paralysis, which I think is incredibly cute. Um, but I'm gonna tell you a little story, quick anecdote. There was a study, I don't have a source, it's out there somewhere, if you want it, I'll find it and I'll tweet it out later. Uh, but there was a study where they studied this. So it was like a grocery store and they had a booth um, and one booth had six varieties of jam. The other booth had 24 varieties of jam. There was more interest for the booth with 24 varieties, right? There was tons of people there. They were really interested by all these jars and all these flavors and everything. Uh, and people were 33% less likely to stop where there were six options. However, the people who did stop where there were six options were six times more likely to actually buy jam. Which, I mean, it doesn't get kind of clearer than that, right? The more options, the more interest you might have because you're gonna be casting a wider net as they say, but the, <laughs> but the lower the conversion that you're probably going to get because people are going to be too overwhelmed, they're not gonna be sure which one is the right decision for them and they're just gonna walk away and find something that's more clear. So for example, at WP Buffs, we have essentially 24, which is funny because of the example, we have approximately 24 packages. However, there are really six packages and each package has four different options. So we have a direct 
pricing and white label pricing. And we also have monthly options and yearly options. So any one package would have four different options. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Um, so it is about offering variety and options, but it's not about providing so many varieties and options that people don't even know where to look. Not all businesses are the same, not all sites are the same, but we don't want to overwhelm people and try to attract every single type of site and every single type of client out there. I see this as kind of the holy trinity of pricing, right? As far as like WordPress website maintenance goes at least, you have where you're charging for one-time services like we talked about. We have monthly pricing and we have annual pricing. This to me is a great way to provide choice, provide flexibility, let the customer choose or the client choose what degree of commitment, what degree of cost they want to commit to. Um, I think that one-time services are criminally underused when it comes to WordPress maintenance. I think it's an incredibly powerful way to say, here's what I got. I'm going to help you make your site a little bit better. We're going to work together. You're going to fall in love with me and we're going to go on this amazing WordPress journey and you're going to work with me for years and years, right? It's it's a way to grab that interest and to prove the, the services that you can provide. The monthly option, obviously, it's great. Smaller businesses might find it more appealing if they have a less sturdy budget. It allows them time to build trust. But what's funny is that when I was doing this, when I was offering maintenance packages, my annual packages were the most popular because people just want to kind of set it and forget it and say, I'm going to pay the whole thing up front so I don't have to think about it anymore. So I highly recommend that you figure out how to offer all of these different options so that um, no one is turned away by the concept of, oh, I have to pay every single month or, oh, I have to pay all of that all at one time. It's a true method, tried and true method that works. If you don't take away anything from what I've said in the past like 30 minutes, I want you to think about pricing your website packages, your website maintenance packages, as though you were selling insurance. To me, website maintenance is insurance. It's a way to protect the investment that you made when you purchased this website, right? Um, you as a service provider are providing protection against a worst case scenario, right? When you price your services, you have to think about the day that will inevitably come when something will go terribly, terribly wrong and you have to spend an entire day of your life troubleshooting one website and getting that website back up. I had a lot of instances where, I'm not gonna say a lot, a couple handful of instances um, where I was up into, you know, middle of the night trying to get a site back up because I messed something up, the client messed something up, there was a server issue, whatever. And having your pricing prepared for that, um, basically what I'm saying is avoid just charging hourly. If you just charge hourly for WordPress maintenance, if you're just charging for the time that it takes you to log into a site and click update, you're doing yourself an absolute disservice. So charge what you're worth. All right, let's go over a couple of recommendations that I have for tools and software, and then we will basically be done. So this is a great time if you have any questions for me to uh, put them wherever it is that you're supposed to. I don't remember what David and Adam said, but this would be a good time to start sending in some questions. Um, reseller hosting we talked about. Huge, huge, huge opportunity to make some extra money. Um, and to be in control of the environment that you're working in, right? Um, this is a tweet I, I tweeted at WordCamp Phoenix last year, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. So I put it in this presentation because I have no shame. Um, and these are all companies that, as far as I know as of right now, offer reseller hosting plans and options. I myself, personally, I use SiteGround. I really, really like it. Um, or I should say I did, I still have an account with them, but I used them for reseller hosting as well. Um, consider all of these, do your research, maybe even use more than one, depending on the type of sites that you get. Not every site 
and every host are a good match for each other. Some sites are gonna be better off on a different host than another one. Um, there is no one good host. Automation, especially as you scale and you're like, okay, I wanna make more money with the services that I'm offering. That means I need to be able to take on more clients. I need to be able to offer more services. You're just one person, unless you hire a full team, even if you do hire a full team, automation is gonna be your friend. Uh, make the robots happy. When the robots take over the world, we want them to be happy and have things to do, right? Um, at WP Buffs, we use Blog Vault to automate a lot of our updates. I am a huge fan personally of GoDaddy Pro, not a sponsor, sort of a sponsor since they're hosting this, not a sponsor of me personally. Um, Hotjar is one of my favorite tools that I feel like every time I mention it in a, in a talk, people are like, so just go Google that. I'll put it in the chat again. Um, I think that's the URL. Daniel will probably help me out. Um, just go Google it and like poke around. I'm not going to tell you what it does yet. I want you to find out for yourself. It's fun. Um, all the Google tools. People have various feelings about Google right now. Um, <laughs> Daniel says hot jar is fire. They are. They are fire. Um, if you are not a fan of Google, like Google tools, your Google Analytics, your Google Search Console, all of that stuff, getting all of that set up, having data about the sites that you are managing with your client's permission of being able to collect that data, that's only gonna help you and it's only gonna help your client. So automate all of that information. Um, webpagetest.com, I believe that that's what the URL is unless I mistyped that. That's my personal favorite site speed tool. There are tons of ones out there. Um, if you are doing site speed op like optimization, site speed tests, use more than one. They are all different. They're all gonna give you different results. Um, that's another thing that you can bake into your maintenance packages is, hey, I don't just optimize your site for speed. I test it against a slew of different options and we make sure that your site is fast on all of them, right? Um, Kingdom is another site speed tool that I'm really fond of. Yes, webpagetest.org, dang it not .com, webpagetest.org, uh, and Pingdom, yeah. Pingdom is a classic, it's one of my favorites. Um, I think web page test. I don't know, they've been fighting for my affections recently, but both of them are good options. Um, please, no more emails. If you are doing, if you are doing website maintenance, please don't do that in emails. If you love me, if you like me at all, if I've earned any of your affection or respect today, get a project management tool. It will make it so much easier on you. Emails are great for networking. They're great for you know scheduling meetings together when you're first meeting that client, that potential client. Um, but once they have signed that contract with you, shove them over to a project management tool. Um, all of these are great options. My personal favorites are Trello and Slack. It depends on what level of sophistication and detail you need. Um, I personally have never used Vendasta. Somebody recommended it to me. I wanted to give you multiple options, but all of these are great. It will take you a little bit of playing with to figure out which one is the best one for you. Again, there is no one best tool. Uh, tip your waitresses and credit your graphic designers. That's all I have to say about that. And yeah, time for questions. Wow, thank you, Allie. That was amazing. You know, uh, you deserve a way or a clap emoji. Oh, look, Olivia gave you one. <gasps> thank you, Olivia. She doesn't give me <laughs> clap emojis. Yeah, can't even thank pick you. up the garbage. All right. Well, <laughs> well thank you very much, clapping. Allie. Thank yes. you. So, drop your questions in the chat if you haven't already. Um, mm -hmm. Adam, you may need to help me because I know we had questions and it wasn't my job to monitor mm -hmm. them. It was other people's jobs. Um, yeah. I got one question for you while they go digging in the mire. What, I don't know who asked this question either. So apologies, um, I can't sharing. give anybody credit here. What do you think about pricing options with maintenance baked in with the initial designs? Oh, wait, I Adam did very, ask that yeah. in the chat. Oh, he did? Oh, cool. Adam asked what do I, think I just read it. About pricing options with maintenance baked in with the initial. So do you mean 
like they sign on for a like design project with you and there is maintenance baked into that as like a non-optional like this is what the package is i guess that's i think that's what i'm getting from that question i think that's oh, a great idea assumption. yeah i think that's a great idea because to me the point of maintenance is to make the site better just make it safer faster just better and it's to make that company or that brand more successful so if you're leading with that in mind of like yeah i'm gonna launch build your website for you and launch it but i'm gonna put an ssl on there and i'm gonna make sure that everything is updated and i'm gonna lock down your you know your server options and all of that stuff um yeah charge for that because it's your time and it's important and it's it's valuable right it's incredibly valuable um I mean, you don't have to go overboard with it, but I think that it's a good idea. It's a great idea, actually, to have a a checklist in there that is baked into the cost of actually launching the site. So you don't have to say to the client, uh, hey, this is the cost of building a site for you, and then here's the cost of all the maintenance I'm going to do. It should just be baked in, and it should be communicated that those activities are a part of the overall experience that they get when they sign up for you. I hope that answers that question. Adam, that wasn't my question, but Hi, that was someone's question oh. that I had posted. Um, but in response to your answer, Cami McNamara says, I offer a free month of my deluxe plan with my proposal. Ooh. Hooks them every time. I would do that sometimes if they were kind of on the fence. Um, it's like, yeah, I would offer, I think it was the first two months free of maintenance if they paid for hosting as well. I think that's what it was. But yeah, you can get super creative with like, it's your packages, right? So you can get creative about what you decide to offer for free and what you don't. Um, I think that's awesome, Cami. That's a great idea. Cami, and we, uh, oh, sorry, talking. David. We, uh, we do have another question here. Uh, how do you set expectations as you write a contract? What are the flags you look for? Hmm, interesting. Um, I looked for a lot of flags. I got really good at looking for red flags when qualifying clients. Um, I even, pro tip, I had kind of like a, a test, a hidden test, where before a discovery call, I would always have them fill out a brief form that had a specific instruction at the end of it about how to move forward with booking the call. And I'd say 50% of the time they did not, I could tell they didn't like fully read the form properly because they didn't follow that step. Um, reading comprehension is very important. So yeah, I would kind of trick people a little bit to see if they were somebody who was taking this seriously and would read through and blah, blah, blah. Um, sorry, can you repeat the question? I forget the kind of the second half of that question. It, what flags were you, what flags do you look for, I guess, especially when you are about to write a contract and you know you want to start selling them on maintenance plans like is there anything right, that so, kind, of, kind of like says maybe you don't want to do maintenance with them or mm -hmm. maybe it's more trouble than it's worth maybe i'm kind of reading into the question yeah so so part i think part of that question was like how do you set expectations in the contract i think that's what i remember um i mean I feel like there's kind of like two parts to the question as far as like looking for flags of like maybe i don't want to do maintenance with this person vibes like it's it's tough i feel like if this is something that you're starting out doing you are going to end up with clients that aren't right for you just it's kind of like a learning experience to figure out what kind of people you just really can't work with um i'd say have a lot of conversations with them prior to that figure out the questions that you need to ask talk to other people like talk to other people who do this and ask them what their qualifying questions are um, but it is also something that like you have to learn that gut feeling like I had so many every time that somebody quit or like something didn't work out I was like you know I had that gut feeling and I didn't trust it and eventually I learned when that gut feeling came around to be like oh suddenly I'm overbooked I'm so sorry and like you know figured out a way out of it as far as setting expectations in the contract every single detail of like whatever my maintenance packages were because they, they changed a little bit throughout time it was always in the, it was in every conversation it was in proposals it's in the invoice it's in the contract like i needed them to be aware 100 percent of what it was i was 
going to be doing. Um, and having it in writing, I can't tell you how many times somebody brought up something crazy, like, I didn't know you were gonna do that. And I'm like, it's literally right here, dude. Like, I wrote it down for you so many times. So over communicating and over explaining and having things in writing, I would say is fantastic. And that's why I really like project management tools because you don't have to hunt through emails. You don't have people saying, well, I didn't get that email or, oh, it went into my spam. Like, no, it's all right here. And all the expectations are here for you. So I think I answered that question. <laughs> good, uh, good advice, uh, Allie. And um, I think just in general in life, trust your intuition. I think that's always the way to go. Uh, we do have another, uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, questions. The next one is WordPress hosting versus WordPress hosting management. Which way do you prefer to sell? WordPress hosting, I don't think, I, I don't understand what the question is. That was a question from Brian Zajac or Zajac. Uh, so Brian, if you want to clarify, uh, that question. Feel you mean free. managed WordPress hosting? Oh wait, maybe that wasn't his. Um, just read. No, I, I see it from, from Brian. Yep. See my comment later. There he goes. Uh, oh, WordPress hosting management equals client signs under your hosting package. They own it, run it, but you, professional management, more transparent option. Hmm. I, I think maybe what he's getting at is, uh, do you, as the service provider, manage their hosting account, the complete package, or do they mm. in and, and actually manage their hosting account? So in other words, maybe you're reselling hosting, maybe you just mm -hmm. have access to their hosting provider. Got it. So what I would do, I'm trying to think how to phrase this properly. I had like a cloud hosting account where I could host multiple sites. And so I would sell space on that host, right? Um, if someone decided they didn't wanna do that and they wanted their own hosting, I had a referral link with SiteGround where I'd be like, I really like SiteGround. I think your site would fit well here. Here's my link if you wanna use it. That worked really well for me, but that was their account and I had access to it if I had to build a site on it and if I was maintaining it, yeah, I needed to have access to that hosting account. Um, but I didn't do a ton of management within that account. I feel like I'm not answering the question very well. Um, I'm gonna go back and look at it. Where'd it go? I don't see his explanation comment anymore. Brian, did I answer your question? I think I did. E you can always DM me. Too. WP we hosting talk, management we can talk equals bit. client signs onto a hosting package. They own it. They run it. But you, but you or your professional management, there's a more transmission option. He may have to rephrase it and fire it off to you. That's Stephanie yeah. says. I think it's a matter of ownership and control. I think mm -hmm. that I think that is the key to it. So. Yeah, if they signed on to a hosting and maintenance package with me, yeah, I, my name is on the lease, right, of the, the hosting account where their site lives. Um, but if they, like, I still worked and maintained sites that were on their own hosting account, that was totally fine. The caveat to that is if they have decided to host with me, meaning, like, they wanted me to own that hosting account, they had to be on a maintenance plan with me because I wasn't gonna have a, a hosting, a, 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 a site on my host that was in any like state that I wasn't sure of, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I definitely dealt with both and I tried to make that clear upfront where it's like your site is on my hosting account. If you would like to be on your own hosting account, that is also an option. Well, I think, Ellie, you nailed it. Appreciate it. And thank sure. you for stopping by. Um, we, Jean has gracefully posted your Twitter handle there in chat. And I think we've also posted your URL, but we will post it again. See, Jean, Jean reads my mind. Not that there's much to it, read. Hey, not that there's <laughs> much to read. Jean, Jean and I go, like, I can't. 
I can't remember when we first started organizing stuff together, but he knows me pretty well. But yes, thank Gene and thank Allie very, very much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, Michelle, this is your five minute warning. Um, oh, speaking of which, um, yes, this, let me figure out what order to do this. And first of all, Michelle, this is your five minute warning. I'm going to switch to my screen for a second. Oh my goodness. Maybe we should give you 10 minutes. <laughs> so cute. Okay. The best so, yeah, but the before world. we, before we go over to what could potentially uh, end the meetup permanently, let me, let me go over to my screen for a second. Um, this is random.org. I have taken all the t-shirt photos um, up to the last few minutes because there is a time limit on these things. I have a list of all the people, I believe here, yes, I took a list of all the people in, I'm randomizing them. Mimi, let's look at your photo. Well, that is a WordCamp Miami shirt. I did not rig this. Congratulations, Mimi. Random.org, not associated with me in any way, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. You are our first mega meetup winner. So you're going to get later on a GoDaddy Pro swag. Now, this is assuming you live in the continental United States. Um, if you don't, let me know, and we'll figure out something. Um, our second way to win a prize tonight comes from Allie's um, presentation. So those who are logged into the website, the same way that you posted your photos, um, you need to drop a link in the next five minutes of, remember when I interrupted Allie and asked her for a particular company or URL? Paste that into here on the WP Game Show homepage in the next five minutes, and we're going to do randomly pick another person to win the second GoDaddy Pro prize. So I'm not going to tell you what it is, and if you can find it out in the next five minutes, paste it there. You can paste the URL. You don't have to spell it exactly correct, but anyway, that is great. And um, so for the next, and don't paste it in chat. I mean, it's generous in 2020, but, you know, I, well, it doesn't, no, we are doing this randomly. So real quick, before Michelle gets on, we did want to give you real quick, um, this is the thing I was trying to show you before. Um, we're not going to spend more than a couple of minutes on this, but all the meetups that we have every month, we like for people to walk away knowing at least one thing, even if they're not attending the meetup for the particular speakers exactly, they just want to hang out. So we did want to share five things really quickly with you. Oh, my camera. People don't want to look at me. Oh, that's right. I did lose the bit. Hold on one second. Well, I don't, I can't turn it on, Olivia. Okay. So, <laughs> so, here are some things to walk away from if you're not going to visit another meetup this month. The first fact is that we had earlier on WordPress 5.5 came out. Good for good for them. You should have updated to that or better yet, WordPress 5.5.1 came out after that since we've been to our last meetup. So if you are good with uh, keeping up with WordPress releases, and make sure you're on WordPress 551, or at least be aware, check out the links, which we'll share in, let's see, I will, uh, I can probably share the PDF before the uh, end of the evening here by Michelle's um, presentation close, and we'll also share them in meetup.com. Um, there is one thing, hold on one second. Yeah, so there is one little thing that's been problematic, and that is regarding um, WordPress 5.5, and I'll try to keep this brief. It is transitioning away from some older jQuery libraries. So we, I work for a WordPress plugin company, and we did get a number of support people come into this. So long story short, there are some themes and some plugins out there that are using outdated jQuery Java, and jQuery is a kind of JavaScript library, jQuery commands or functions. Um, 
most of the professional WordPress plugins and good WordPress themes shouldn't have this problem, especially by now. But this update for 5.5 has been, usually updates for WordPress are pretty non-news, but this actually did cause a little bit of spike in support problems, especially for people who had a plugin that used JavaScript that was affected by this. So you can check out the links. I'm not gonna try to give you the whole story here. The link at the bottom to Search Engine Journal tells you the problem, the general problem with what I'm trying to describe and the fact that, um, that if you upgraded to WordPress 5.5 and you had um, some JavaScript problems, this is the reason why, probably. And that if you installed this enable jQuery migrate plugin, it likely fixed it for you because it, it put back the libraries that your WordPress site was, was missing in order to support that. This is a temporary solution because when WordPress 5.6 comes along, there's gonna be a complete transition to that. So if you are experiencing or your clients are experiencing some issues and you haven't yet figured out what they are because they may not show up immediately, you may want to install this plugin. And the other reason why you want to install the plugin is that it will also figure out for you if it comes to a page in your admin that it detects outdated jQuery, it's gonna give you a warning such as what you see like this on your screen. I'm keeping this very low level technical. The people that understand the technical side of this already know what I'm talking about. I, they, they don't need a rehash of it. I'm just kind of giving you the cliff notes. But this is important because I think this is still important now to keep, to keep a watch over because there are still some outdated plugins out there. So, and, and themes too, pretty much. So if you've upgraded to 5.5, if you're experiencing what could be related to a JavaScript issue, um, try installing the jQuery Migrate plugin and see if that does anything for you, if you are on your own and you wanna try something. Um, you may or may not see a warning such as this. You will see a warning like this if it is already, um, if it's something in your admin and the warning can be displayed properly. But if you install the plugin and it fixes itself, you now know that well, you've got to do some more troubleshooting to determine maybe exactly what plugin it is if you don't already know, and then kind of contact the theme or plugin or find an alternate source. So I did want to bring that to the meetup's attention. Like I said, we we try to, every month at our regular WordPress meetups, we try to catch people up on the latest WordPress news, and we're keeping it short this week. I'll sh Like I said, I'll be sharing the PDF um, after, after this meetup. The two other things that we thought were interesting was, um, you can check this out later, um, WP Tavern has a good post on starting a recipe blog with the recipe block plugin. I know not everybody cooks here, but if you are still trying to get familiar with the um, editor and the block, this is a good article to read, and Michelle's gonna be a good talk to listen to in a few minutes. And if you are interested in Automatic's block first WordPress theme called Seedlet, um, definitely check out this link when you get to the PDF. It's WP Tavern, um, I think it's probably, this link is probably still on their homepage. If you do have experience with the editor and want to get a taste of what a block first WordPress theme feels like, because that we will be building themes with blocks, or at least some themes with blocks down the road. It is definitely going to be a thing. I can finally start my Glutenberg, my gluten-free recipe blog. Oh, you get a cookie alley, that's clever. Okay, but anyway, this is our top five for this evening. I thank you very much for listening. Like I said, just check your WordPress uh, versions and keep in mind that J jQuery Migrate plugin. And that is all I have to share. So I'm literally, because I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And now I'm gonna give control over to Michelle after I make sure I have, okay, let me just go through more housekeeping real quick. First of all, <laughs> sorry, gee, people just giving me things. I told you to give this to me yesterday, mom. All right, so GoDaddy Pro, we wanna thank you again for, for sponsoring this evening. We remember, like I said, we have our first winner, our second contest winner will be selected well, and I'll place them in chat while Michelle is discussing and going through her demos and walkthroughs. If you do have a question for Michelle, um, keep in mind that we're not getting any younger over here monitoring the chat. So I want you to start your questions with a Q and colon. So um, do it like that, you know, you know, Q and a colon. So one of my favorite Star Trek characters, 
And after that, an internal body part, a Q and a colon. Yes, go with that. And then it'll be a lot easier to find questions for Michelle as we copy them because this chat, this chat is just like a mile long. Okay, that's it. I think anything else will will drop in the chat as you listen to Michelle. Now we'll turn it over to her. Thanks again for Allie. Yeah, awesome. Hi, everybody. Cool. So um, Allie had a really great, you know, formal presentation with slides and stuff, and I don't. Uh, I'm actually just going to be talking a bunch about Gutenberg. Uh, normally, if we were in person or we were on Zoom together, this would be the time where I'd ask everybody kind of what their familiarity level is with Gutenberg. It looks like the chat is pretty quick. Um, so if you want to kind of say on a scale of one to 10, where one or even zero, zero is like, I have not used Gutenberg yet in any way. And 10 is like, I could probably write the code for Gutenberg. Um, then give me kind of an, oh, this is great. It's like watching virtual stand up uh, <laughs> when, we, when we're when uh, we doing story point estimates. All right, I just like to get a sense of like who I'm talking to. Um, the numbers are going by pretty quick. I know. Oh my gosh, how am I gonna how am I gonna estimate this story? These points are all over the place. Um, great, cool. Uh, yeah. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of different people. People that have never done it before. People that are pretty like mid level comfortable. Um, I'm seeing some comments about not knowing JavaScript. Um, I'm actually not a very good JavaScript developer either. I'm you know I can write vanilla, uh, but I am not a React developer yet. And so um, eight six seven five three zero nine. Thanks, David. Appreciate your appreciate your contribution to this conversation. Um, I'm not really much of a JavaScript developer either, uh, but I have been writing a lot of custom blocks. Uh, how does that work? Well, I personally use the Advanced Custom Fields Pro uh, license, which enables you, yes, exactly, to uh, develop custom blocks while writing PHP and doing it in the way, if you've ever used ACF before, um, it's very, very familiar. But I didn't want to dive into that first. Um, what I did want to do is kind of give an overview. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, to give you an overview of like what the uh, block editor is, and I'm I didn't comment on my hat, but uh, like everyone was talking about wearing WordCamp shirts and stuff, and I don't really wear T-shirts ever, so I figured I would participate with the most WordCampy thing I have. I actually wore this uh, for uh, WordCamp New York a few years ago, and it was over Halloween weekend. I was like, this would be great. So, I'm gonna share my screen and show you um, my demo theme so that you can see all about Gutenberg. All right, sweet. Cool. So this is uh, my personal base theme. Hopefully you can see it. I, uh, I use this as the framework for all of my client projects. It is uh, very roughly based off of uh, a very old version of Roots, which is um, kind of an, a, a framework that uh, has evolved a lot over the years, but I, I've built this, and I like to use ponies for all of my demo content uh, because then it's really clear which content is the demo content and which content is the final content, uh, pro tip. But um, so this entire site, basically all of the content uh, is built using the Gutenberg block editor. Now, I do want to be a little clear about uh, people use the term Gutenberg and block editor interchangeably. Technically, Gutenberg is the name of the plugin, uh, and the plugin and the project supporting that plugin that does new feature development on the block editor, and the block editor is the name of the actual thing that is in WordPress core and the thing that we can expand upon and build for. That being said, if you're in the community, you often use Gutenberg and Block Editor simultaneously. And you know, if you're not in the community, you know, Gutenberg's kind of our our fun little code word. But anyway, um, this entire thing is built with Gutenberg. It is built with a cu combination of custom blocks and core blocks. And I want to talk to you a little bit about. Um, how you can use core blocks in interesting ways, what are some of the features that kind of come with Gutenberg uh, uh, from a user perspective, also from a developer perspective, and answer some of the questions that I've gotten along the way. Um, so I will dive in right now to just a general page. Uh, let's just go to a page. New page, I know how to use WordPress. So my screen's over here, which is why I'm just gonna like keep looking this way. Um, Anyway, I have just created a page, and if you might have noticed, uh, this is a brand new page, but there's some stuff on it already. 
uh, what's up with that? It also kind of looks a little bit different, right? It's a little bit different than your standard WordPress page. Why is that? Well, as a theme developer, which I am, uh, I have a lot of control over what uh, people get to see when they edit um, in the back end. And we've always had this control. We've been doing stuff with page builders. We've been doing stuff with custom fields. Um, but the block editor can be a little bit overwhelming for clients. And I understand that was some of the resistance that people had when they were first adopting it is like, oh, well, my clients are just going to be so overwhelmed with this. How am I going to direct them what to, what to do? Um, what I do as a theme developer is a thing called block templates. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about block templates, block patterns, and reusable blocks, as well as custom blocks. These are all tools in your tool set if you are a developer um, that can help you build better uh, interfaces for your end clients. So you can see this is a normal WordPress page. It's just a standard page post type. Actually, you can't see that because uh, by default, uh, the sidebar is gone which is a frustrating user experience decision that they made. Um, in the upper right corner, uh, you have this little menu, and this little full screen mode is checked. And you can uncheck that, and you get your sidebar menu back. So that's just another fun thing that you can use. Um, yeah, no kidding. Um, because I like to know where I am. Uh, I like to be able to easily view the page. I like to be able to easily get to other things and see what's going on. So I personally like this. Sometimes it's nice to hide it um, if I want to just have more screen real estate if I'm working in a small screen. But generally, I prefer to have it. Um, but you can see on this blank page that I have uh, this cover block with a title and some subheadings and a background. And everything looks kind of different. And this is a default page. The reason is that in my theme, I have written a block template. Um, if you look at a block, and here's another pro tip, uh, in uh, the, the little three dots, always look for the three dots. Three dots are all your secret options. Um, you can uh, copy the block uh, code and paste that into a template. And that is a really easy way to be able to make uh, block templates. Um, I believe there's a way in here somewhere. Uh, it might have been just in the Gutenberg plugin. There was like a way to be able to actually look at the code in this view. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is this is a block template that I've used. You can also have like a lot more complex block templates. Um, I have built it for clients where uh, you open up a page and they have like a title and a subheading and a paragraph and columns and a gallery and it's all just right there on the page and you can just fill it in the same way that they would have done with custom fields or a page builder or something similar in the past. So edit as HTML, why don't I even see that? Like I know that's a thing, edit as. <sighs> I don't know how to use Gutenberg, it's fine. I'm just teaching you Gutenberg. Um, but anyway, so this is, this is an example of doing things with a page template. But otherwise, uh, we want to start adding blocks here. Now, WordPress, by default, comes with a bunch of blocks. Um, and every time you have a paragraph, this little, this little menu kind of pops up here. If that annoys you, by the way, um, in your settings up here, um, you can use this top toolbar setting. And the top toolbar setting will put all your block options up in the top toolbar so they don't pop up over your text if that annoys you. Um, so just as an FYI, that's a thing that you can do. Uh, again, that was the top toolbar. Otherwise, you can have them in line with your blocks. Some people prefer to work a little differently. Um, but by default, as you type, it creates paragraph blocks for you, right? Which is really exciting. Uh, but you uh, can also add other blocks. Uh, in line, you can add a block using this add block injector, right? Where you can see some of the most recent blocks that you've used, or you can search for a block and it will uh, populate it. Ooh, it's showing block patterns too now. That is that is fancy. I think I have uh, the Gutenberg plugin enabled, so I get to see all the, <laughs> all the fancy new stuff. So I'm like, oh, wow, new thing. Cool. Um, I get to learn along with you. Uh, but also in the upper left corner, you have this plus button. And that is also a way that you can insert blocks. I kind of like using this method, too, uh, because I just have more screen real estate to be able to see everything. Um, so it's all uh, divided up by category. These are primarily core blocks. So you can see we have lots of options. We have buttons. Um, we have a list. Uh, all of these here, too, give you a little bit of a preview. 
um, previews are something if you are a, a custom developer, you can also register previews for your own custom blocks. Uh, but I like the previews too because they give you a little bit of an indication of what is to come. So let's say I wanted to insert, you know, a heading here instead of a paragraph. Heading. Or let's say I had a paragraph. This is also fun. Uh, blocks can enable uh, a thing to transform into another block. Uh, so paragraphs can be tr transformed into lots of blocks because you may have wanted to actually do a quote. Um, or, and you know, that is a very famous quote. Uh, and I'll write the, the citation for that, me probably. Um, so we, we have blocks, but then blocks also have different settings. And these are usually in the right-hand column. So if you don't see the right-hand column, uh, this little settings bar in the upper right corner is the thing that enables your right-hand column. And this is where you can see your settings. Uh, now in WordPress, we are used to having the sidebar have our document settings. So you can switch between document settings, which is your stuff like your, your page template, your uh, permalink, your featured image, whatever else is associated with the page or your block settings, which is for whichever block you're enabled. Um, you can see that quotes can have different styles. These are partly built into Gutenberg, but also partly supported by your theme. So that is kind of why Gutenberg will technically work on any theme, but it's very important to have a theme that is explicitly designed to work with Gutenberg because um, it'll support these styles. So let's say actually I didn't want this to be a quote, I want it to be a pull quote. Um, which has a whole lot more options here. So I could do a solid color pull quote where the main color is pink and my text color is orange. Um, really hard to read and a cool thing that comes with uh, Gutenberg's core color selectors is that it'll tell you uh, if your contrast level is not high enough. I really like that. So um, I have uh, my theme you know, pulling in. So maybe if, if it's default and I have my text color be purple, um, you can see that my theme is supporting the quote styles. And if I um, preview this in a new tab and show this to you, you can see that my theme is, is rendering it the same way uh, that it's showing in the editor. And that's actually a question that I got. Um, one of the questions I got in the chat was, how do you get Gutenberg to be more WYSIWYG? Um, I tend to see columns and everything much smaller in the editor than I do in my theme, uh, which impacts the word wrap. Uh, so theme developers, those of you out there, this is actually your responsibility. Um, theme developers need to enable editor styles and be able to define those styles for within the Gutenberg editor. So you can see that my editor here looks pretty similar to my output, right? Like my fonts are the same, uh, the, the width is, you know, the max width is the same, it's very wide. Um, and you can see on the front end, you know, it looks basically the same. That is because I, as a theme developer, have explicitly enabled my front end styles to be pulled into the back end. I have to do a little bit of finessing. You can see the theme styles are a little bit um, overzealous. My WordPress, uh, my WordPress menus are now rendered in my theme fonts, which is, you know, kind of fun, but maybe problematic depending on what you're doing. Um, but that is because I uh, I have enabled theme styles in the back end. So that that is why if, if your theme developer does not enable this, uh, you will just see the default uh, Gutenberg editor style. So you can still use it, it won't be broken, but it probably won't look exactly like it's gonna look on the front end. So that hopefully answers that question. Um, so we have blocks, blocks can have settings. You can see here, I have a whole bunch of colors here. Um, by default, you would have a color picker. Um, and some core colors. I, as a theme developer, have been able to define specific brand colors. Uh, personally, I actually tied them into a customizer setting that my theme has um, so that people can pick the colors for their theme and then they have them available here. Uh, but this is, again, my responsibility as a theme author to build these things in so that my users um, will be able to stick with their brand and use colors that I know are gonna look good and not just use random stuff. Um, but these are all core blocks. Uh, core blocks have a lot of options, uh, not just paragraphs and buttons and headings and stuff, but things like columns and groups, uh, super, super useful. So if I build a columns block, uh, let's say I wanted three columns, I now have these three kind of grouped things that I can then start adding, you know, my own headings to, uh, you know, convert it down to an H3, whatever. Um, I could put a quote in this one. Wow, columns. 
I definitely need. Cool. Uh, another little pro tip for those of you using Gutenberg, uh, the block editor. Uh, so you want to maybe select some stuff. So you can see uh, a the quote has its own settings. Uh, a column also has its own settings. You could choose to maybe have your middle column be a, a wider width or not. Um, but the columns block itself can also have settings, and it gets really hard to like know which block you're selecting, right? That's kind of a pain. Um, one thing you can do in the, the newer versions of WordPress and in the Gutenberg plugin, um, if you hover over, if you're in, if you hover over whatever block, the little icon that shows you what block it is, uh, this icon pops up over it, and that says you can select the parent. And if you hover over that, you can select the parent of that. That's kind of cool. Another way that you can see what's going on with the blocks on your site, what you have going on, is this little option right up in the header here. Um, it's called block navigation. And it's basically a tree view of your site, which is really nice. I was very excited when I found this. Um, so I can see here that I am in the columns block. I can drill down into the heading block or drill back up into the columns block. Um, but it basically can show you all the different parent level blocks that you have. And if you go into one, you know, I go into the cover block and then I can see all the different things that are inside my cover block. So this block navigation tree view is very, very useful when you start getting into complex layouts. Because I could put all kinds of things inside columns. I could put other things inside there. So there's lots of things. This is all still uh, core WordPress functionality. But what about some of this other stuff? So um, another thing I wanted to share with you, these are all blocks, but you saw these other two tabs right here uh, called patterns and reusable. Uh, block patterns, so WordPress now comes with some block patterns if you wanna try them out. They're basically just groups of blocks uh, together that make something useful. Block patterns can be built with core blocks, they can be built with custom blocks. Developers, if you're building them with custom blocks, please make sure to uh, check if those blocks are enabled before rendering the pattern, maybe provide a core fallback. But I've built a whole bunch of custom patterns that I have in my theme that I believe people are gonna want. Like you saw when I made that column block, you know, it just started with blank squares. And if I wanted to make columns, like that's great, but that might take me a while. I have a feeling that my clients are going to want to do uh, three columns with images and a paragraph and text and a learn more link. I have already, um, I've already written this uh, to exist. So now I have three columns that have the image upload block, the subheading block, a paragraph, and a learn more with some of this default text and thrown in. This is, this is the magic of block patterns. And this is something, again, you can move them around. Uh, they, you can insert them, you can get rid of them. Super great. Um, I have built several patterns. You can build patterns too. Um, just common, common things that people are going to want to use, right? Um, yeah, super fun. I love block. So when I heard about block templates and block patterns, I was immediately sold on this as a user experience person uh, because um, this is the kind of stuff that I want my clients to be able to do. It's not this, and these aren't, you know, these aren't, this isn't a custom block. This is all just core blocks and I just made a pattern. Um, let's say though that you build, you know, I have a, a pattern in here uh, that's a, um, I have to go into, you can't insert patterns inside a group block. You can only insert them uh, to it, into like the parent block, right? Your your main page. Um, oh, I got a question. Did I do the custom patterns from site to site by plugin? Uh, I actually registered them as part of my theme, but I believe you could just make a block pattern plugin, especially if you're supporting core blocks, you know, then they are, you know, uh, able to transfer from theme to theme. I do put all of my core blocks into a plugin. Uh, I mean, my custom blocks into a plugin so that those stick around no matter what theme exists. And I can show you some of that too. Um, but anyway, let's say um, I have a, a call to action kind of block thing. Um, this is the call to action. So take some action. I'm so good at writing these, I should just be a, a marketer. Click here, that's a very useful button. Definitely don't make a button that says click here. But let's say I love this call to action and I wanna be able to reuse this exact call to action on multiple pages. Like I want it to link to the same stuff, I want it to have the same exact text, I just wanna keep reusing it. Like this is my call to action. Um, what I can do here for the call to action is use the freaking 
thing to select the parent. There we go. That uh, so useful. I can add this to reusable blocks. Um, when I do that, I can give it a name. My great, my great, great call to action, and save it. Uh, this actually saves it as its own custom post type. Um, so reusable blocks are different than block patterns because a block pattern is just a collection of blocks. Once you stick it on there, you can do whatever you want with it. A reusable block is, um, it's exactly the same everywhere. And if you change it one place, it changes everywhere. So again, it's really good for like a call to action that needs to stay the same or something that needs to stay the same in multiple places and will update everywhere. Um, but you can see now uh, this is a reusable block. Um, I could create a new page. Um, so let me just do that in a new tab, like make a new page. And I'm like, this is my new page that I'm making. And I want to use that call to action again. So I'm going to, my reusable blocks loaded. Here's my great call to action. There's the preview for it. Super great. And there it is. It's exactly the same, right? If I edit it and I'm like, so take some action right now and save it. Uh, this will actually update it everywhere that it's being used. So hypothetically, um, if I go back here and, uh, you know, update this by doing things, I'll probably just preview it. Probably easier. But yeah, you can see that on my original page, the text uh, has been updated. So that's, that's reusable blocks, different than block patterns, different than block templates. Um, so block patterns and um, block templates are kind of developer tools in that uh, you do need to be fairly comfortable writing some WordPress code to be able to create your own. Um, but block reusable blocks are a UI tool. You can see I just made that. You can you can do that um, even if you're not a programmer. You can create your own, and then those are available. Um, if you edit it, uh, it's letting you edit it in line, but it also would let you. There was like a way. Oh my gosh! And again, Gutenberg and the block editor updates so often that even the stuff that I was doing a month ago might be obsolete now. Um, but uh, it is its own custom post type, so it stores that uh, elsewhere. Anyway, uh, I'm going to look at a couple other questions. That was kind of the main Gutenberg question that I got. Um, I got a random question about uh, that relative URLs are not OK in WordPress, and I've tried some, and they seem fine. Um, I usually try to use relative URLs if I'm hand typing a URL. If I'm linking to content, I use the content uh, finder. But if I'm, I don't know, I use relative URLs when I'm linking images and stuff in a theme file. Uh, I'm not the right person to ask, but I, I guess I haven't broken anything. Uh, so anyway, these are all core blocks. This is all stuff that comes with WordPress. But what about custom blocks? What, what kind of fun stuff can we do there? Um, so this is an event management platform that I have been working on uh, for a client. And it has custom blocks uh, that can run a virtual event, which is super fun. Um, it integrates with BuddyPress. It integrates with membership plugins. It integrates with WooCommerce. It integrates with event tickets, all sorts of different things. And uh, But the, the plugin itself is a fairly fully featured content management system thingy for speakers, sponsors, exhibitors, and a schedule. Um, the schedule, in fact, might seem kind of familiar. Uh, so it is a fork of a plugin that I think was based off of the original WordCamp scheduler. Um, I've done a whole bunch of stuff since then, but all of this is powered with um, ACF Pro custom blocks. Uh, these are all custom blocks. I can edit this page and show you what I mean. So um, for example, this is a page that displays a schedule. Um, cool. Let's load it. Um, and here's the schedule. If I click on this block, uh, you can see that I've got some block settings here. Uh, it comes with a couple different color schemes, which you can see will re-render to be totally different. Very attractive color scheme there. Super great. Um, it You could lay it out as a table or as a grid. So again, these are options that you know, call some different, you know, apply some different classes. You can choose whether or not the sessions link to, uh, they have a permalink, whether they're an anchor link, like they'll jump down to uh, the, the page or not have a link. You can choose whether the speakers have a link or not. Um, so lots of options here. Um, this entire site has several different uh, plugins to display speakers, to display events, to display other, other things. Um, this was all built with advanced custom fields, custom blocks um, for 
my clients that are using this. Um, these custom blocks will show up in here under the event blocks section, or I can just start searching for event and they'll show up. I've given them all icons. Um, they don't have previews available yet. I do have to write custom previews for them, but these are available for them. You can see a bunch of other plugins register blocks. Jetpack has blocks. Um, the event tickets plugin has blocks. Uh, all sorts of different blocks exist. And there's going to be more and more ways for people to create block plugins that you can add stuff. So I'm really excited about that. Um, also, as an example, this is back to my custom theme. The, this is a block plugin that I actually have available up on GitHub. So this theme and these plugins are all up on GitHub and my customizer plugin and all of it is up on GitHub. Um, Mark 10 Media is me everywhere. So I'm GitHub slash Mark 10 Media. Um, and you could download my theme. You could download my uh, plugins, whatever you want. It's the, um, the Blocks plugin, the customizer plugin, and the Pink Spring theme are what I'm using here. Uh, these are all custom blocks. So again, using ACF Pro, um, so you do need to have ACF Pro enabled to be able to use these blocks. Uh, but these are blocks that are pulling in dynamic content. So um, I'm actually pulling in uh, blog posts that I can either add manually, display uh, everything from a post type, pick a specific category to show, how many do I want to show, how many per row. Um, I could show a list of category links, which it just re-renders right there in the editor. I could show a view all link if I want it to link to everything. Um, I can give it a custom background color if I want to. That's, you know, super attractive. Uh, but this is all stuff that I was able to do with advanced custom fields, building blocks using PHP. Um, I even was able to do a slider. So I used a WordPress gallery to build a slider. Um, I can set, you know, whatever the minimum height and maximum heights are. I can choose whether it's a carousel or a gallery, how many show at once. I said four, what the speed is, what the background color is, all sorts of different things. Yes, everything's My Little Pony because, again, I like to uh, make it very clear what um, make it very clear what my demo content is. And if it's My Little Pony, it's probably demo content. Um, but then you can see that it renders this slider, um, and I can kind of slide through it. So that's pretty cool. Again, all these are custom blocks um, using ACF Pro. Um, I don't want to talk forever because I know that uh, this meetup has an end time and we all want to play games and stuff too. Uh, but if there are any other questions, I am uh, Mark Time Media basically everywhere on the internet, Twitter and whatever. Every, every social platform. Um, you can find me online. My personal website is michelleshulp.pink, which is also my name is michelle.com. Uh, my business website, marktimmedia.com. Uh, I'm really easy to, to find if you want to hit me up for any gutenberg -y stuff. But I'm really excited about Gutenberg uh, and the block editor. Coming up next, if you liked the block editor inside a page, you will love the block editor outside of a page, because we're going to be able to use the block editor for all sorts of things. Pretty soon, we're even going to be able to edit our entire site using a block editor and create things. So that's going to be really interesting for um, theme authors as well as end users. Um, I do see that there's quick questions coming in in the chat. So if you want to get your last question in while I'm rambling, please go for it. I'm happy for it. Uh, I did get a question that was not uh, relevant to Gutenberg, but is very important. What is my process in creating a new WAPU? Um, so while the last questions are coming in, um, I do actually do a lot of WAPU designs. I have a, an affinity for WAPU. I didn't invent WAPU. WAPU uh, is not mine. WAPU is everyone's. But um, I do like to create WAPUs. And the reason I started doing WAPUs is just because I like doing cartooning. I like doing character studies. Um, I did a lot of studies on Pikachu and Raichu to see how they moved around and how their bodies worked so that I could like draw WAPU in a lot of different positions and it would look kind of right. Um, but in creating a new WAPU, sometimes people request things for me. Sometimes um, I just have an idea like, I want WAPU to be eating a taco, and then I just do it. Um, so that's a little bit about that. Um, you can check out some of the WAPUs I've done on WAPU.us. Um, so there's a question about if we use Divi, is it the same as a block editor? So page builders are their own thing. Uh, Divi is one, um, Visual Bakery, Beaver Builder, um, Elementor, there's a bunch of them. Uh, page builders, I like to say, 
are for people that um, can't or don't want to write code but have a lot of opinions, right? Uh, because the block editor, you can do a lot of really great layouts, you can build a lot of custom things, but some of that is dictated by your theme, uh, whether or not um, you can, you know, do uh, different things. Whereas a, a page builder, um, you have granular control over almost everything if that's what you want. You know, you can set all your margins and your spacing and your layout and your five million options. If you if you have strong opinions but you don't want to write code, like that's the niche that a page builder still serves, even in the days of the block editor. Um, question if there's a major speed advantage to using a block editor with ACF versus page builders. Um, it depends on the page builder. Uh, some page builders are more performant than others, and some page builders are more, um, are more, yeah, uh, I don't know, friendly than others. Some page builders are easier to move away from than others. I recommend people use core WordPress functionality as much as possible for everything. Um, ACF with the block editor might be faster than some page builders. It might be slower than using just core blocks. Um, ah, so I see the, the recommendation on drag and drop about the handle's gone. So the handle's gone, but it still actually works. Um, if you just, I mean, usually it works. I think you can, I've, I've gotten it to work before. It's very, it's pretty kind of glitchy because I've gotten it to work where I can grab it from the icon, but clearly I don't. Oh wait, no, I did it. Ha, it's doing it, it's doing it. Cool, all right, so I think you grab it on the arrows now. Grab it on the arrows. All right, we all learn this together. I'll do it here, I'll do it here. Um, here's a new page, here I'll do it. So I'm on this thing. Yeah, there used to be some little handles that, that stuck out, um, but if I grab the arrows, I can move it around, I can move it around. Woo. Yeah, uh, I don't love that either, um, and there aren't a whole lot of options besides the move up and move down if you have it up in the top. Again, that was the setting for the top toolbar. Um, if I'm on a block, you basically only have this option. Yep. But now you can still grab the arrows. This is great feedback for um, if you want to hop into the WordPress Slack ever, uh, the main WordPress Slack, and kind of give this kind of feedback. Um, there have been a lot of really great improvements in, in the usability of the block editor since Gutenberg was first released, but um, there's also been some things that maybe have regressed, regressed, and I know that they're, they're kind of trying this as a bit of an experiment. Again, I don't quite remember if I have, I don't think I have the Gutenberg plugin active on here. I think this might be um, what's in 5.5 right now. So um, yeah, cool, fun, fun stuff. Um, any other random last minute questions? Because I want to make sure we have time for the actual fun part. An actual fun part because we have some of our contestants just realize they're on a phone and wouldn't be able to play. Although we might be able to bring in a couple of random people in to play something that we were thinking about. So if you want to, if there is a question or two while we set up, that'd be great. Yeah, I can answer. And, uh, if you have any other questions, design, development, WAPU, work at home, random things bugging you. So I did get a couple of very specific questions in the chat about um, some very, very specific use cases. I unfortunately can't really troubleshoot, you know, what is happening on your specific website for your specific thing based on your description. Um, I know that there are probably a lot of interesting bugs. Sometimes it's things that have to do with what's on your host. Sometimes it's things that have to do with uh, your theme. It's hard to say, um, but uh, good luck to those of you with bugs. I, I can tell all of you a little fun story. I spent two hours yesterday um, adding, no, yes, adding and then removing two exclamation points from a piece of code in order to make something work. It took me two hours. Um, it was, so that's development. It's so fun. Um, the the backstory was that I had a, uh, a variable name that changed, which is fine. Um, but there was a, it was a variable that checked whether or not a video existed. But there was another place that stored the URL for the video. Um, so if the video 
if this variable was set to true and then you could put the URL in and then the video would show up. Um, but I changed the variable names because I was re refactoring a bunch of the code to make it better and more compliant. Um, and in doing so, the new variable was set to false because there was no video stored there, but the URL was still stored. Um, so I couldn't uh, see the editor to edit the URL, uh, but I, I couldn't see the video because has video was false. So I had to find, and the only act, the only code I had access to was like um, minified JavaScript that I had to unminify. So the function names were all like random single letters and not super fun. I had to find the section that was controlling that setting, change it, reverse it by saying not, right? That's what the exclamation point means. It means not um, so that I could delete the URL uh, from where it was stored and then change it back and then it was all working because the thing said false and there was no URL So then it was all working again, but it took me two hours <laughs> to add and remove two exclamation points. So um, Just so that you all know we're all in the same place <laughs> Laugh I, <laughs> I can hear the uh, at least I was getting paid for it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I don't know if it was shared, but I can share my GitHub link in the chat if you want to check out any of the stuff that I have showed you. So I also have a Wapu library on there. It is very sorely out of date, um, but there are some Wapus in there if you want to look at wapus um oh best way to minify and unminify so minification i mean i it depends like i'm running um gulp and doing all that uh but to unminify you can't really unminify a minified thing because it doesn't know but you can prettify it right and i've just been using like unminify.com or something um which is fine. I mean, at least it was readable and not all one line anymore. Um, and I, I just needed to be able to, to fix the thing, right? So that worked. Oh, question. What's my take on the latest roots versus the current version of roots you're using? So the current version I'm using is very old. It's from like 2013. I mean, I've, I've changed a bunch of things. So it's not, it's, it is based off of roots. Um, but it's very old. It's before it had all of the build tools and everything associated with it. It was just, like the theme template system. I love the theme template system that Roots was doing where you have a wrapper um, and it abstracts away the need to have to like call get header and get footer like in every single friggin' template. Um, it also makes it easier to be able to use your templates in clever ways to do um, like Ajax content and stuff because the header and footer aren't included on all your internal. So I like it. I, I like some of the abstraction. I like some of the cleanup that it did. Um, I haven't used the newest version of Roots with all the build tools. I'm guessing it's nice. Like there's a reason that they did it. And um, I'm only just now getting into like needing a build tool process. Uh, so, um, you know, working on, uh, I set up, oh my gosh, um, there's like a really good like WordPress gulp, uh, thing that I set up, uh, and that's been really helpful. Um, I should share that, um, with all of y'all. I'll find it. Hey, Michelle, are you going to be able to play one game of WordPress Quiplash before we close or do you have, yes. or you have to go? Okay. I can, I'm I can gonna, hang. It's fine. Okay. I'm going to direct cool. message you in the chat. Cool. Um, but did we take care of our questions? If not, y'all know where to find me on the internet. Yeah. I just want to make sure we, I don't know if Gene or you can drop your information in there real quick. And then you can check your direct messages. Yep, yep. I see that I have one. Oh, here's my here's my personal URL. If y'all need to bug me, um, sweets. And Jean, if you can hear me, I sent you the info on Slack. Go ahead and get in there. And while Michelle is 
adding your information. I wanted to thank you. We have one last thing left, but I did want to thank Adam, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Adam Warner. He's going to be stepping out, but he is one of the last people from GoDaddy Pro that is here today. Thank you for them setting up this room, the promotion in the whole nine yards. We had over 120, 122 people show up tonight, which was awesome. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with the fact that we had two great speakers, but also the promotion of everyone involved, including GoDaddy Pro. So thank you for that. Now, we will be able to distribute the recording of this. I will get a hold of the meetup organizers. I'm also going to fire it off on Twitter and my own meetup. So last thing we wanted to end this with is a game show. And we're going to see if this is going to work. Um, I'm going to go share my screen, but I need someone, maybe my daughter or Michelle can let me or make sure that they can at least hear the audio. The game show is open to contestants, which has been our speakers or meetup organizers, but all of you listening now can participate. It's called Quiplash.